Well, good day, everyone, everywhere, and special greetings to all those seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I truly pray that everyone that listens to this broadcast, that hears the words coming out of my mouth, will be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul said that about our position in Christ in the world. If we are in Christ, then we are already seated in heavenly places in him. Okay, we just heard the news. Uh, do you believe a word they said? <laughs> How much of that was propaganda? Yes, indeed. How much are they hiding? And what's really going on? Do we have to talk about Ukraine? Do we have to? You know, I guess we have to say something about it. Uh, even though I, I hate taking part of the PSYOP and the diversion. But I just have to let you know that a diversion is what it is. I got a couple articles here that talk about that. Uh, you got this one here from Lou Rockwell, The Land Where History Died, Part 1. Well, I don't really need to go deeper than Part 1. Uh, in light of the grotesquely, grotesquely one-sided Ukrainian war news on the MSM, uh, it can be well and truly said that America, February 2022, had become the land where history died. Yeah, because you, nobody knows that several years ago that there was a coup instigated by the West in the Ukraine to overthrow the, the popularly elected government there because it was pro-Russian. There are a lot of Russians in Ukraine. And uh, so they overthrew it. But they would like you to think that the Ukraine has been there forever and places like Yugoslavia never existed. That's what they would like you to believe. And that's why America is the land where history has died because you're not supposed to think about history, only what's put in your face at the moment. And so there's this article there at Lou Rockwell. You can check it out for yourself. And I don't really think I need to say much more than this is a distraction. Uh, this war, oh no, it's going to be nuclear and we're going to eviscerate. We're going to start a nuclear war and everybody needs to be really, really afraid of the LGBTQ government losing its power, the LGBTQ ad infinitum <laughs> government that was installed in the Ukraine. Uh, within the last 10 years to supplant the one that was voted in by the Ukrainian people about uh, 2010 is now being overthrown. And now there are the, they are the heroes. And Dale puts a good point in the, in the chat room. Are nuclear bombs even real? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, is it a conspiracy? Is it a psyop? Yeah, it may be a psyop. Yeah, are nuclear bombs even real? Yeah, well, I don't ever want to find out uh, by firsthand experience if they're real or not. Yeah. Okay, well, what else do we got? Um, prophecy reality. The march to the bark of the beast continues. And, of course, our job is to resist but getting back to the real war that has been going on. See, this one is to distract you because the real war, the narrative in the real war is starting to unravel. So quick, quick, pull out the nuclear scare tactics. We need a, we need a real war with guns and tanks and fire and brimstone to distract the people from the, what's unraveling in the West. And people losing uh, their liberties in the West. We, we can't have them focusing on that, on the truckers going to D.C., on whatever happened to that, to the truckers in Canada. Nobody knows anymore. It's to totally disappeared from the news. Nobody cares anymore. Uh, nuclear war is coming. Fire and brimstone are going to, uh, you know, strike the whole face of the earth. We need to be really, really afraid. It's time to duck and cover, children. Don't you know? Yeah, don't you know? Um, says, okay, nuclear physicist Galen Windsor says 
nukes are not real. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we went through all this stuff back in the 90s. And uh, so I don't know. You know, I have to tell you the truth. I, I simply don't know. I question it myself. And uh, but you are supposed to believe they're real. And that's that's the point is that most people believe they are real. So when they throw up the threat, you know, uh, to cover uh, what the real war that is going on, and that is the war for the human mind, the war on the individual, the war on individual liberty, freedom, and a government by, of, and for the people. That's what the war, real war is on. And of course, it's brought to you by the Antichrist, who doesn't really exist. No, no, it, it can't be the historical and biblical great apostasy with its man of sin sitting at the Vatican. It can't be that. No, no, that just, yeah, scoff at that. You, you've been taught to scoff at that someone brings it up that, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, the, the Pope sits in the seat of the Antichrist. And then they scoff at you like you're crazy. That's right, because you're not going along with what you're supposed to believe. What's wrong with you? What, what are you, all you people doing here at First Amendment Radio? Don't you know? that you're deluded, you're conspiracy theorists, and and that what you believe, it can't be true because that's not what you've been taught to believe in the public fool system. Yeah. Boy, we got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to talk about today. And if anyone has any questions about prophecy, you know, kind of put them in the chat room, you know, and uh, we'll save them for one of the segments in the, in the second hour. But right now, we're just going to do our uh, prophecy, al- prophecy Reality Worldview Weekly. And uh, the rest of the week, I've been going through Isaiah. And, you know, and I was thinking, as I'm going through Isaiah, and we have all these judgments on all the nations around Israel and Judah, you know, back before the Babylonian desolation in that era there, but when the nation uh, split into two. And, and then we have, we see all these judgments on all the nations around. And, and I was thinking, you know, wow, if I could find in America, I mean, in the Bible somewhere about the judgments that are going to fall in America, why didn't God give us, you know, a prophecy, a prophet who would tell us exactly what was going to happen? Like he did all of those nations around Israel. But as, as I've been going through, Isaiah, and I hope you've been listening during the week, because there's much that God has much to say to us there, and that's what I figured out. God doesn't need to write us <laughs> exactly what he's going to do to America, because he's already written how he deals with nations. And see, so I, I noticed that nations receive judgments like the populations would be decimated and, or that all of the, whatever, they'd lose all of their food or famine would come or, or whatever, the sword would come upon them and they would be slain in their beds or whatever, whatever judgment it was for whatever nation. But then I look at what has happened in America and all the Western nations over the last two years and I'm going, there it, there it is written. You know, if we know God's word, we understand when we look around, we see what's going on. And we should not be surprised that when a a nation goes primarily wicked, like America and the West have gone, they've forgotten God, that these judgments are going to come upon them. How how about a judgment? Say, Say one judgment against slaying the innocent, slaying children in the womb. So God, the judgment of God would go like this. I will slay your children before your eyes. So what's happening? Okay, they got deceived and taking into taking a transhuman jab, even administering it to their children. Now they're watching their children die before their eyes. Will they repent? That is the question. That's the question God asks all through Isaiah. Will they repent? Will you repent? And so... And uh, how about another one? Um, uh, you've robbed the nation, so I will rob you. You know, 
And here it is. We're being robbed right before our very eyes. Our, our money is being debased. Our currency is being debased. We have to pay more for things and things are becoming scarce. All of these judgments coming on America in the West are because God has decreed these judgments for a sinful nation. Now, if there were no sin in America, if America has, has not got apostate, then these judgments would not be just. And they would just be happenstance or accidents of, uh, you know, reality as, as most people believe that these things have nothing to do with God and his displeasure with the people that are going through these judgments. And of course, then you got the, you got the pre-trib rapture folks going, Oh, no, God's, that's, you know, God will never, uh, pour out his wrath upon us. Oh, no. This, this why God is going to take us out before any wrath is poured on us. And they've got this, their selves deluded into thinking to, to equating judgment on the wicked and them being here while that judgment's going on as God's wrath. Well, it is God's wrath. But God's people have always been present when God has judged the wicked. And God promises the wicked that he will sustain them through it, even through death itself, see? Because the righteous have nothing to fear. The remnant that belong to God have nothing to fear, despite everything that's going on, even if a nuclear bomb is dropped off and you suffer horrible, you know, pain and suffering in the last days of your life. Will you praise God in that moment? Will you glorify God even in your suffering and your death? Because it's called tribulation. When the evil comes on us, but it's judgment when it comes on the wicked. Yeah, right? it's just... You know, and Jesus did say, in this world you will have tribulation. He says, that if our master didn't escape, you know, judge, I mean, tribulation, if our master didn't escape um, persecution and tribulation, how, how do we expect to escape it? Well, we should not. So all those cowards that want to be raptured out before anything bad happens, yeah, well, that's very comforting, you know. Uh, I, w I would wish that was true. I, you know, like I said, if I was going to choose one of the three rapture options, you know, from the multiple choice prophecy, <laughs> I would choose the pre-tribulation rapture. That, that would be my choice. My flesh loves that concept. Yeah, my flesh loves that. I want to escape suffering and tribulation and I'll call it wrath and I'll convince myself that God would never let his people suffer one iota from the wrath that falls on the wicked of course now history belies that and that's why you know the Antichrist and his his amazing educators that are in every public school and they're behind all of the textbooks everywhere throughout the world, practically speaking, have taught you not to pay any attention to history. They've revised history for you. They, they only teach you the history they want you to see so that you'll buy into their scheme, their way of thinking. Yes. The rapture will be canceled. Yeah, well, by the end of the seven-year tribulation play that they're going to pull off on the Temple Mount, you know, it, it'll go. You know, they'll start building the temple, and nobody will be raptured. You know, that's uh, multiple choice one is gone, so you got to move to multiple choice two, the mid-trib position. Uh, that would be the second choice if I if I was going to choose the one. I, my first would be pre-trib, but. You know, if that one goes by and nobody's raptured, then, of course, I'm going to choose the mid-tribulation position. And uh, and then, okay, well, four or five years go by and they're building the temple and they're almost done. And you're going, oh, well, gosh, you know, it didn't happen three and a half years after they started this thing. We've already passed the midpoint. I guess it's post-trib. Yeah. <laughs> that must be it, because they always they always accuse me of being a post tripper. 
I'm not, I'm none of them. I'm not any of them. I'm not pre, mid, or post trib. I mean, I know that the resurrection is going to happen. That's why I, I don't like to call it the rapture. I know that the resurrection will happen after the tribulation of those days, the days that we're in. So there is tribulation, but it is not the great tribulation. It just says there shall be great tribulation. There shall be. There has been. I've been through some pretty great tribulation in my life, and I expect there's going to be some even worse great tribulation coming up in the future. You know, but it's the tribulation of those days. It's not the great tribulation. Uh, somebody put that definite article in there and they've even put it in some of the new versions. Mm, yeah. Uh, especially those that new, uh, pre-trib rapture version called the ESV. I call it the eviscerated version. <laughs> the ESV. Yeah. Anyway, that's the way that goes. Ah, that's enough of my rant for the rapture. None of the raptures are going to pan out. We'll be here eight or ten years after they complete the temple and everything. But Jesus is coming on his calendar, on his timetable, not on the rapture timetables. Yeah. Don't even believe it for a minute that he's going to come on the pre-tribulation rapture seven-year uh, multiple choice rapture timetable. He's not coming on any of them. He's coming on his calendar for the seventh millennium, for the millennial reign of Christ. That's what he's coming for. And for that great battle, that great day of God Almighty, that's when he will appear in the clouds and we will join him, just as the scripture says. Speaking of uh, the real war here, we got I got a couple of articles here from I got one from um, Robert Malone. I wanted to read a few snippets from that. So these are from doctors, and these guys have, and uh, also McCullough, one of my favorite authors on uh, Lou Rockwell, is Doctor Joseph Mercola. Uh, his article is really really good. One here, I believe. Oh, yeah. Propaganda, corporatism, and the hidden global coup. This will weave in with the uh, Mercola article really well here. This is uh, by Robert Malone. Uh, knowledge of theory and practical implementation of mass formation psychology. Uh, there's a phrase which we've been hearing quite a bit about. Mass formation psychology can and is being used by propagandists, governments, and world econ and the World Economic Forum to sway large groups of people to act for the benefit of the pro propagandist objectives. And we know that what their objective is and who they're working for, whether they know they're doing his bidding or not, they are working for the Antichrist because the Bible tells us that the Antichrist rules the world even after after his head wound is healed until Christ comes, okay? Yeah. Although a major crisis of some sort can be extremely useful for propagandists to take advantage of, war, hyperinflation, or public health, for example, all of those things going on now, these psychological theories can and often are applied, even without strong evidence, of a compelling crisis. And we've seen the evidence of that statement over the last two plus years. For this to be effective, the leader mu just has to be sufficiently compelling. <laughs> How true. One current example involves the almost global acceptance of mask use by the general population over the last two years because Fauci and his acolytes at the CDC insisted that masks work after, after first telling us they didn't work or they were unnecessary. Let's see how they can turn on a dime and people just follow, you know, like the lemmings headed for the cliff. <laughs> Public acceptance of a very intrusive element into people's lives was almost universal. Data demonstrated lack of effectiveness of mass preventing spread um, and uh, they're largely irrelevant, either rejected or unable in for existence to be acknowledged by those who have become hypnotized by the mass formation process. Even the logic 
of masking children was accepted without question, despite clear and compelling evidence of harm. Paul Joseph Goebbels was the chief German propagandist for the Nazi party and then was promoted to the Reich Minister of Propaganda from uh, 33 to 45. He was truly a master and arguably the creator of the concept that the state can control people by introducing propaganda into the news to enable the state-based control of entire populations. Goebbels' wicked, wicked brilliance was to exploit racism as a tool to promote German nationalism to the point of mobilizing and motivating Germany to engage in globalized war for political, military, and economic do dominance. His writings and speeches on propaganda have been studied by leaders and governments ever since. Much as the writings of Niccolo Machiavelli continue to be a cornerstone of modern interstate real politic. Examples of Goebbels' insight include the following, and I'm going to quote these and then we'll move on. There was no point in quoting uh, Goebbels here. There is no point in seeking to convert the intellectuals, for intellectuals would never be converted and would anyway always yield to the stronger and this will always be the man on the street. Arguments must therefore be crude, clear and forcible, and appeal to emotions and instincts, not the intellect. Truth was unimportant and entirely subordinate to tactics and psychology. I tell you a big lie enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. It has thus become vitally important for the state to use all its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. We'll continue this when we get back. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Nicholas Arthur, and I'd like to introduce you to my latest book, Reformed Prophecy Interpretation, an apology for reformed premillennial historicism in the 21st century. As with primitive biblical Christianity, historicism is the method of prophecy interpretation restored with the advent of the Protestant Reformation and had become so widely held that for a long time it was called the Protestant view. My book is not so much about the errors of dispensationalism or amillennialism, rather it is about the historicist alternative to understanding many of the same passages from the vantage point of prophecy fulfilled in history. For those that desire more than mere hypotheses, bolstered with conjectured speculation, those who require explicit biblical exegesis and verified historical fulfillment, and are not willing to accept speculation as anything other than what it is. Speculation, not truth. This book is for you. Over the last century, this method of interpretation has become almost completely forgotten, even by Protestants, in the face of a method that is based almost entirely on future speculation, rather than fulfilled prophecy in history. In my book, I examine the reasons for this and investigate some of the prophecy which has been fulfilled in the interim, as well as present an apology for reformed pre-millennial historicism to the 21st century. If you're interested in a copy of my book, you can go to my website, crosstheborder.org, and get more information there. Or you may also find it at Amazon. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. 
If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Okay, welcome back from that long break there. And uh, we were talking about, let's see, propaganda corporatism and the hidden global coup. Uh, speaking of uh, Joseph Goebbels, uh, the propagandist for the uh, Third Reich or Fourth Reich or whatever number they give to these Reichs these days, Goebbels theories applied uh, today to what's going on. This The article here by Mercola is the <clears throat> planic uh, demic uh, enters the final stage. Real purpose exposed. Okay, so we get to the real purpose. The only thing he doesn't reveal for us, as nobody does, is that who the real actor, the the prime actor behind all of this is, of course, being the biblical and historical antichrist. Okay, February 21, 2022, the Canadian Parliament approved Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau's motion to invoke the Emergencies Act with 185 votes to 151 in response to the peaceful trucker protest against their country's mandates. While Trudeau, in a February 2022 press conference, promised the act would be limited in time, geographical location, and scope. He's already reneging on that promise, but I believe that since then, uh, he, the, he has ended the, the emergency, but he's put in place several things that it brought into place permanently, and that's the financial surveillance powers. It says will be permanently expanded. And that's what we're talking about, the 2030 March to the Mark of the Beast. So whatever those powers put in place for financial surveillance will be permanently expanded. Uh, the act was invoked to allow the government to physically disperse the trucker's convoy without actually listening to their complaint and to punish anyone who has supported the protests. The act was invoked to allow the government to physically disperse the trucker convoy. Under the act, banks are empowered to seize the personal bank accounts of anyone suspected of participating in the protests, supporting it with as little as a $25 donation. Disturbingly, the surveillance powers over financial transactions granted by the act are actually intended to become permanent, as reported by the National Review. Quote, in a February 14 news conference, Canadian finance minister Christia Freeland, another Davos devotee, uh, that is the World Health, uh, World Economic Forum devotee trained, uh, leader, said that the government was using the Emergencies Act to broaden the scope of Canada, Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules which all these rules really are for, have been used for, is to bring about and bring forward the mark of the beast. Uh, not to do what they say they're going to do. They, they use these for their ultimate goal. So the scope of Canada's 
America's, uh, the whole world's uh, anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. See, they control all the money, even your crowdfunding sources and whether it's gifts and go, they all have to participate in the monetary system owned by the Antichrist. There's no way out unless you move to the black market or barter and trade or only use cash. Okay. Anything online where, where you start using electronic digits and the banking systems and transferring funds from one account to another, the Antichrist controls all of that already. Sorry if you, that's news to you. Uh, that broad and power requires all forms of digital, digital transactions, including cryptocurrencies, to re, be reported to Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Center of Canada. FinTrack in Canada or FinTrack. It's FinCEN in America. Every country has their, uh, uh, their iteration of this type of control in it. Um, she justified the move as a way to mitigate the risk of illicit funds and increase the quality and quantity of intelligence received by FinTrack to make more information available to support invest investigations by law enforcement. And you can see now they're, they're investigating peaceful protesters. <laughs> see, not drug money and cartels. They control all of those. And, and the ones that pay them they allow to exist. Come on, you know, get a clue. <laughs> they show it in a lot of these movies and series on, on your entertainment television. And uh, you can say, you could see the element of truth that exists there. Especially, I don't even need to go on with that train of thought. Freeland said the trucker convoy, which had assembled to protest coronavirus restrictions, had highlighted the fact that digital assets and funding mechanisms weren't captured by the Canadian government's pre-existing surveillance powers. Oh, there's something we aren't looking at, something we aren't scrutinizing. Yeah, they weren't captured. Yeah, but everything's captured by the financial system, uh, the monetary, the fiat monetary systems of the world that, of course, are under the control of the Antichrist and his shadow government. Do I have to say it again? As a result, she said, the government will also bring forward legislation to provide these authorities to FinTrack on a permanent basis. So they, they want nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. If they're going to cut you off from their funds, they want you to be cut totally off. And when people start dropping out, as it becomes uh, apparent that the mark of the beast is, you know, the final form of the mark of the beast is being enforced upon the world and all God's people, the elect must drop out and it becomes notable. Then they will start cracking down on black market trading in substance and coins and whatever else. And we talked about several weeks ago, if you missed that broadcast, about them confiscating gold in order to set up the new one world monetary system. I think that is going to, that is a, uh, something that has a real possibility of happening because it's in their playbook and they've used it in the past. And I believe they will use it one to exert their authority and two, to give some, um, what, what, what's clout to their new monetary system by saying that it's backed up by gold. But since we have none of the gold and they ha will have it all, then it doesn't matter. It's still going to be a fiat usury monetary system, but they need to be you to believe that there is something behind it. So I would not write off or uh, the idea that there will be a worldwide gold confiscation from all of us peons out here. Yeah. So that they can have some 
illusion of stability and authority and backing behind the one world monetary or mark of the beast monetary system that they want to enforce uh, by 2030 or begin enforcing. So mark of the beast inquisitions will thereafter be enacted using this power that they're talking about. And of course, more powers than this. You'll see more legislation against unreported transactions in uh, coin and substance or whatever. Okay. Um, as noted by the National Review, we can already tell that the Canadian, what the Canadian government will do with these expanded surveillance powers. We're seeing their intentions in action by invoking the act. Uh, Trudeau has given himself the unilateral power to destroy the lives of Canadians who happen to disagree with him, regardless of the issue at hand. So you can, can you imagine the Antichrist doing something like that? Well, this, this leader is trained by the Antichrist and his minions. So of course, this is their playbook. And you're just getting to see a glimpse of it now. For those of you who haven't seen this developing openly for the last 20 years, it should become, uh, should be becoming very out in the open, you know, very obvious. So when he announced his invocation of the order, he promised the Canadian people that his expanded authorities would be time limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. Of course, he would say that because that's the truth. But that doesn't mean that he that the time limit won't change or be imposed again, and the, the targeting will not be expanded or changed to other targets. He's just telling you this is how we're going to operate from now on. But he's trying to make you feel good about it at the same time. Not a single part of that sentence has proved to be true, says the National Review. Well, it's all true, but <laughs> it's expansive, and it goes on. It's just not going to be, uh, it's not going to end. It's what they're saying. It would be time limited, meaning they can change the time and the limits any time they want. It can be expanded. Uh, it can be targeted anywhere they want, whenever they want. They can change the targeting. That's what the statement really says. So not a single part of that sentence has proved to be true. Yeah, ex you know, explicitly, but yeah, all of it has tr proven to be true and will prove to be true from now to eternity if they have their way. Without court order or due process, the government can now freeze bank accounts, cancel insurance policies, and revoke driver's licenses. And the victims have no recourse of remedy. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, there is a recourse and there is a remedy. It's called repentance. That's right. And uh, switching your allegiance from the kingdoms of this world to the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ whose kingdom will last forever. He says, uh, of course, all of this, of course, flies in the face of Trudeau's promise that the Emergencies Act's powers would be temporary. Well, yeah, temporary, except for the ones he wants to keep using. So... Uh, when he announced his invocation, he already promised the Canadian people that his expanded authorities would be time limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable proportion to the threats they are meant to address. Not okay. You just uh, read, uh, put that up there again, and uh, I'm not going to play that video there. What's happening in Canada should be a sobering wake-up call for the whole world. They're showing us exactly what's in store for all of us. I agree with that statement. That's what they have in store for all of us. That's why we must resist. And when it comes that, I mean, we're going to have to opt out of their banking system, people. Uh, and it's better if you do it voluntarily, that you prepare beforehand. And as far as, uh, you know, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove in everything that you do. Yeah. And, you know, make whatever preparations you need to make for yourself. 
Uh, if you can't pay your property taxes in four years, you know that they're going to come with the sheriff and deputies and guns, and they're going to remove you from your property because uh, because they're going to put your property up for auction. So if you can find a way to have your property taxes paid <laughs> four years, uh, you know, uh, continually so that you can stay on your own property or whatever, um, do what you must do, uh, you know, it's, it would be wise to make some kind of plans or plan for a place to go if you have to go. Uh, and I don't know to what extent this will be happening in America or, or what extent the enforcement powers of the Mark of the Beast Inquisitions will be worldwide or regionally, uh, whatever the case may be. That's why we must resist as, as much as we can, wherever we can, wherever we are, we must resist. And, you know, right now I'm thinking, okay, Lord, do I need to move somewhere else? Will it go better somewhere else? Because, of course, you know, we have 50 states here in the United States of America. And this, these states are, this, the 50 states of America are like the fifth different states of Western Europe. Okay. You have all those states over there. And that's the way I look at it. I, I don't look at uh, the United States of America as one nation. Um, I look at it as 50 different states. And although they do have um, that central government that was set up basically over there in Washington, D.C., an act uh, of the Antichrist. And, you know, I have an article about that on my website. It's called, what is that article called on my website? Yeah, it's there at the top, if I put it at the top there. And it's called The Empire of the City, The Unholy Trinity That Rules the World. Still, every day, uh, the most popular uh, article or post on my website is that one. More people come to see that one every day than any other one. So if you haven't read that one yet, you should. Uh it, it tells you about the coup that happened with the uh, Constitution of America. Really, the con was setting up the 10-mile square area concentration of power. That was the doing of Antichrist agents in America at the beginning. The whole reason. They, know, they knew they couldn't overthrow America and the liberties, but they knew if they could concentrate power they could eventually overthrow the whole nation. And they've worked very patiently. And uh, they have done it, as you see now. Uh, we're going into uh, the break here for our second segment. We, we will be back for another hour here. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Okay, welcome back. Here we are for the final hour of our broadcast. Okay, absolute control through financial slavery. That's what the Mark of the Beast is really all about. That programmable currency might restrict freedom is probably the understatement of the century. It is an absolute given. Imagine your employer, your government, and the central bank itself having the privilege to dictate how you spend your own money. But hey, you will own nothing, and you will be happy. Yeah, how about that? 
How about this? <laughs> you will know nothing and you will be happy. Yes, we will own everything. We will be, you will be our slave. That's, that's what it's all about. There he is, a representative of the Antichrist. Yeah, and uh, force, the force industrial revolution. Yeah. Yeah, heard enough about that. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, so imagine your employer, your government, the central bank itself having the privilege to dictate how you spend your own money. And isn't that what you just did in Canada? Justin Trudeau told the banks what they actually put someone, they're paying someone to sit there and look for these people, to look them up and shut their accounts off and make that decision to shut their accounts off and take to rob them of their labor, their God-given labor. See, that's they're playing God because that's what your money represents. It represents your gift from God, your God-given labor, that which you shed your blood, sweat, and tears for. Imagine a third party deciding how much you're allowed to spend on rent. You will own nothing. Yes, will you be happy? What kind of food or clothing you're allowed to buy? Or what hobbies you're allowed to spend money on and when? That's the power they intend to obtain. And current events in Canada prove it. The socially beneficial outcomes. Mutton is hidden, hinting that we are basically, that is hinting at, are basically that an unelected cabal will have the ability to micromanage your personal finances and hence dictate your behavior in every area of your life. Now, you wonder where inflation is going. Why, we, why do we have this inflation? Well, it's because they had to rob you of your money while it's sitting in the bank. That isn't enough for them to rob half of the value of your money while it's sitting in the bank or while you're laboring for it. That isn't enough for them. Yeah, they want total control of what you have left, what they don't rob from you. That's what the Antichrist wants. Okay. They want to dictate your behavior in every 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 area of your life. As noted by British activist and radio presenter Majid Nawaz in the Joe Rogan clip above, I think I played that for you last week, with a programmable CBDC, the British government would have complete control over anyone who disagrees with their policies or activities. And where are they going to get the money for to hire all these people to look at your life continually? Well, they rob it from you. See, these people don't pr produce nothing, but they're going to get paid for controlling you because they can hire as many people as they want because they print the money. And when they print the money, the value of the money that you have goes down. So you had to buy transhuman jabs for the entire world. Did you know that? You. That's what they use your money for. That's why your money buys less now, because they robbed you for that. And not only that, they took your money and uh, the value of your money, and they used it to enrich all of their friends and to do nation building, like installing a LGBTQ-friendly government over there in the Ukraine and robbing those people of their duly elected government so many years ago. And they wonder why it isn't working. And meanwhile, they've been in there robbing the country and making people like uh, Hunter Biden and his uh, father very rich. Yeah. Yes, they've robbed that nation. And this is this is what they do. This is their reward for going along and doing the bidding 
of the Antichrist in his shadow government. That's where your money goes. That's why your dollars are worth 30% now than they were two years ago, and soon to be 50%. Because building this new world order is going to be very expensive, and we all must pay for it. Yeah. And if, if, if it isn't enough that they tax you, they're just going to take, rob you of the value of your money right out of your pocket before you even spend it. Because that's what they're doing by inflation. Plus, it does another thing for them. It helps to collapse the economy as you know it, which will necessitate them confiscating everyone's gold to have their new gold backed one world monetary system by 2030 and it will be primarily digital and uh, everyone will be required to participate and uh, if you don't have that's why they gave made they wanted to make sure everyone had cell phones yeah that's going to be part of it so we excuse me we may have to throw out our cell phones yeah yeah we may have to uh as God's people, as the elect, you may have to have burner phones. You might want to call someone or something, but you may want a burner phone. And uh, and you may want to keep your phone off all the time because they can track and trace you, uh, even though they have only have the, the, uh, the app turned on automatically on iPhones. I would never have an iPhone. You can't even turn it off. You can't even turn off the tracking and tracing on it. For example, with other surveillance, they could determine that he was planning to appear on Rogan's show and simply reprogram his CBDCs with the click of a button such that he would not be allowed to purchase a plane ticket. Say, oh, we don't want you, you know, it's like they they arrested uh, the pastor up there, Arthur Pulowski, up there uh, in Canada, uh, pre-crime. Yeah, they wouldn't see. They wouldn't have to do that now. I mean, once they have their total control, mark of the beast monetary system, he wouldn't be able to get on a bus, buy a gallon of gas, start his electric car. That's why they want all these electric vehicles, because they have to put devices and mechanisms in there so that they can be controlled remotely, yeah, and they can be controlled. Even a lot of your gas-powered newer vehicles can be controlled and returned off, turned off, or even remotely driven into a pole if they wish. Yeah, don't don't think that's just science fiction when you watch it on the TV. That's true fiction. It's based on reality and what they can do. So you want to make sure you don't have one of those computers in your car, but they want everyone to have electric vehicles. And that's really the reason behind it is it tends to total control. Okay. Of course, CBDCs and this CBDC, I forget what that stands for, but this is the, the, the total control of the money system will exist by themselves. They are designed to be used together with digital ID and social credit scores like that of China. The vaccine passports are one type of platform that could be used for this. It's not going to be one thing. There, there are many different modes to the operation of this thing, okay, of the mark of the beast that they're implementing. You might be required to give a number at one occasion or another or show one of your cards that they gave you uh, that's connected to your ID, your mark, of the beast, okay? and it's the beast. The beast is the government. The mark is ID. See, chances are they'll introduce a digital ID system instead. And yeah, that, that will be part of the mark of the beast inquisitions. Everyone must participate. And those that don't participate, well, they will be cut out. And then they will be criminals because they will have to do things that are against the law, like trade and substance or black market, or uh, participate in the black market, where, of course, the controllers cannot control, and whatever they cannot control will be outlawed. That's what it's all about. So the passports, 
Okay, of course, see, they'll exist by themselves. Social credit score like China. The passports are one type of platform that could be used. Uh, other types of platforms, are you giving your number, thumbprint, any, wh whatever uh, manner of uh, biological ID, uh, 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 iris scan, um, facial recognition, many, uh, many things will connect you to your account, to your mark, your identification in the B system. It will all serve the exact same function. Global leadership has been infiltrated. We talked about this uh, over the last couple weeks. Uh, and we saw that clip I showed you, I believe, last week. That, uh, uh, well, and that's the clip I just showed you where, where Klaus Schwab congratulates uh, Trudeau for being such a good uh, little servant for the uh, the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum's Great Reset, which is part of the Antichrist shadow government agenda for bringing all these things about. So the WEF has installed its members in national leadership roles around the world to further the organization's sprawling authoritarian gen agenda, explaining that government leaders worldwide have begun lifting mandates and restrictions while leaving in place an apparatus of digital tracking and identification that forms the embryonic stages of a digital social credit score. That sounds much better than Mark of the Beast <laughs> monetary system, doesn't it? Um, Nawaz said the WF under Schwab has worked on embedding people in government who are subscribed to the Great Reset Agenda. That's what they say to themselves, pointing out that the so-called Great Reset, whose advocates have famously asserted that by 2030, 2030 agenda, see, it's all the same thing. You will own nothing and be happy, as explained in details on the World Economic Forum's website. Okay. In a 2020 book entitled COVID-19, The Great Reset, Schwab openly argued that the response should be used to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contract and working conditions. The WF has clearly articulated its interest in pursuing a global digital ID system. We'll just call it the Mark of the Beast <laughs> ID system. Mark. ID. That's what Mark means. That's your biblical word for identification. Mark. Okay. So this is going to be a never ending process to slowly move the goalposts, uh, Rogan surmised, towards more and more author authoritarianism. Checkpoint society. It's all there. They've told us this. How exactly has the WF infiltrated governments and leadership roles around the world? In part by getting members of its young global leaders group elected or installed in key positions. They got Canada, don't they? Uh, would it surprise you to learn that Trudeau went through Schwab's young global leaders program? Well, we all know it now, don't we? Yeah. And uh, it's all around us. I mean, Joe Biden works for the Antichrist directly. Uh, the governor of California, you know, that's akin. I mean, there's more. I think there's 30 million people in California. That's as big as Canada. Maybe not. It's a lot of land, uh, but not as much as Canada, but it's as big as Canada. Um, and who's the governor there? Well, he may not be a young global leader, but he has been trained by the Antichrist, you can go to his wiki page or, and uh, you'll learn there that he is Jesuit trained. Yeah, he works for the Antichrist and you can tell by everything that he's doing that he's in working lockstep with young global leaders, Klaus Schaub's WEF, everything, all of it. They're all in lockstep together. 
other members whose dictatorial mindset cannot be disguised any longer, our New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Yeah, Jab Cinda Ardern. And French President Emmanuel Macron. Bill Gates and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg have also gone through the program. And both are clearly supporting and promoting the Great Reset Agenda through their respective business ventures. Globalists plan to seize control of health systems worldwide. Yeah, well, they, they obviously already have, have they not? See, that's why I don't collect socialist, socialism security, want no part of their Medi-Cal, Medicaid, Meta-anything, nothing. And the only doctor I've seen in the last uh, 20 years is a dentist. Well, in the last 40 years is a dentist. And that's the truth. Okay. And I don't give them a number. They always ask for that. They always ask for it. You all know what I'm talking about. Anytime you go to any medical dentistry, anything, they ask for a number. You don't have to give it to them um, because I don't give them a number. I just say, I'm not a socialist. Sorry. I don't participate. No, thank you. There's no law requiring me to. So as long as that's the truth and if they require me to, I will refuse. Yeah, I refuse. And if they want to kill me for that or chop off my head or whatever, fine. You know, my, my master said, fear not them that kill the body, but fear him who can cast both body and soul into hell. I'm going with him. Yeah. Because, the, see, the, the secret is I know I'm going to die anyway. That's the end of mortal existence anyway is death. So all they're doing is threatening me with something that's going to happen to me sooner or later anyway. So in any case, I should be prepared for that. Yeah, I should be prepared for eternity. So your money isn't the only thing the globalist cabal wants to control. Yes, that's true. Warns that the next move in the globalist war and humanity is seize control over the healthcare systems of the world. Too late. Yeah, already done. Already done. They started that with insurance companies. And then, you know, when they started, everyone started having health insurance, that that drove the price of everything up because the health insurance companies were paying for it now. And they didn't care if they jacked up the prices. They enjoyed it because they got a percentage. Yeah. They got a percentage of it. And they just raised the rates and, and, uh, the percentages would keep going up. That's, yeah, that's why the doctor don't come to your house no more. There's no more house calls. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. P- when people become dismayed, when they become a Christian and go through tribulation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for those words. We got some conversation here in the chat room any comments or questions anything i need to be aware of in the chat room i don't know it's a lot to look at and read Uh, i guess ruth took off she'll be back next wednesday i hope we'll see her back here okay anyway continuing with this article here looks like i'm going to go into a break pretty quick Your money, we have discovered that the next move of the global predators already in progress in their escalating assault against individual and political freedom. The next big assault on human freedom involves legalized takeover of national health care systems by the World Health Organization. Like I said, already done. This is a done deal. Um, You know, I'm glad that Joseph Mercola is seeing this happening, but it's this is done. This is already a done deal. Uh, th- he we should have put this first. This is done. I mean, obviously done, right? I mean, if I go to the hospital and, or something, of which I'm going to stay, you know, do everything you can to stay out of the hospital. Now they they're incentivized to kill you. Yeah, just watch some Stu Peters episodes over there at Stu Peters uh, show wherever you find that. Okay, so we see that some people are waking up, but this is why we have the distraction. Because now people seem to be forgetting what has happened for the last two years. Anyway, I'm going into break. I'll be back in a few minutes.
Don't go anywhere. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our listen and schedule pages on the internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Nicholas Arthur, and I'd like to introduce you to my latest book, Reformed Prophecy Interpretation, an apology for Reformed premillennial historicism in the 21st century. As with primitive biblical Christianity, historicism is the method of prophecy interpretation restored with the advent of the Protestant Reformation and had become so widely held that for a long time it was called the Protestant view. My book is not so much about the errors of dispensationalism or amillennialism, rather it is about the historicist alternative to understanding many of the same passages from the vantage point of prophecy fulfilled in history. For those that desire more than mere hypotheses, bolstered with conjectured speculation, those who require explicit biblical exegesis and verified historical fulfillment, and are not willing to accept speculation as anything other than what it is. Speculation, not truth. This book is for you. Over the last century, this method of interpretation has become almost completely forgotten, even by Protestants, in the face of a method that is based almost entirely on future speculation, rather than fulfilled prophecy in history. In my book, I examine the reasons for this and investigate some of the prophecy which has been fulfilled in the interim, as well as present an apology for reformed pre-millennial historicism to the 21st century. If you're interested in a copy of my book, you can go to my website, crosstheborder.org, and get more information there. Or you may also find it at Amazon. Uh, welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. This is a live prophecy reality worldview weekly edition here. And we're talking about the takeover of the monetary systems, the health systems of the world. Um, the stealth attack with its initial plans already backed by many nations will begin full implementation in 2024 if it is not quickly recognized and fought. And see, that's one reason why they're stepping back and uh, they bring on this threat of nuclear annihilation with this, uh, uh, with this PSYOP going on over there in the Ukraine uh, and the threat of nuclear annihilation. And they, they needed something to distract people because they were starting to feel uneasy about the implementation that is going on. But let's read on. Okay. Uh, speaking of the takeover by the World Health Organization, 
uh, the stealth attack with its plans already backed by many nations. That, that shows you that the hold that the Antichrist and his shadow government have in all the nations of the world, as we have been discussing here. Uh, the Chinese communist influence over WHO has been solid for more than a decade, and the party was able to install Tedros without any competition. He became the first and only director general who is not a physician and instead is a communist politician. Now the director of the WHO, uh, Tedros, has unveiled plans to take charge of all global health. While addressing the WHO Executive Committee on January 24, 2022, uh, Director Tedros spelled out his global health plan, including his final priority for his enormous scheme. The fifth priority is to urgently strengthen WHO as the leading and directing authority on global health at the center of the global health architecture. Tedros disclosing words to his to his report to the executive committee are chilling in their grandiosity and echo Marxist exhortations to cheering mobs by Stalin, Mao, or Xi Jinping. We are one world. We have one health. We are one World Health Organization. Tedros seeks to become super Fauci for the world. And like Fauci, he will do it on behalf of of the global predators so enter health fascism have you seen a taste of that already yeah with the mind control mixed in uh, turning uh, family members against family members neighbors against neighbors and so forth so as explained by bregan the global health care takeover really began with gates decade of vaccines announced in 2010 at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos. At that time, Gates installed Dr. Anthony Fauci on his vaccine advisory board, thereby guaranteeing his plans, would receive support from the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, which Fauci is the head of. He continues, a theme for the decade of vaccines was public-private partnerships drive progress in vaccine development and delivery, essentially the precursor to the Great Reset, establishing a world governance and public and private health united in the spirit of fascism. By 2012, Gates achieved official UN approval fully for his scheme. See, remember the image of the beast, okay? establishing a brand network of global predators aimed at exploiting and dominating humanity through public health. Communist China would play a prominent role through its control over the UN and WHO and through its close relationships with global predators like Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, Mike Bloomberg, uh, big tech executives, and many other billionaires and world leaders and yeah, billionaires. <laughs> uh, a decade and more later, during uh, the panic demic, uh, WHO has proven its usefulness to the predators in orchestrating science, medicine, and public health in the suppression of human freedom and the generation of wealth and power for the globalists. Yes, we've all seen it play out before our very eyes. Under the guise of a global pandemic, uh, the WHO, WEF, and all of its installed leaders in government and private businesses were able to roll out a plan that has been decades in the making. The panic demic was perfect cover in the name of keeping everyone safe. The globalists have justified unprecedented attacks on democracy, civil liberties, personal freedoms, including the right to choose your own medical treatment. Say, already done. Now, the WHO is gearing up to make its panic demic leadership permanent and to extend it into healthcare systems of every nation. This idea is the principle of health for all universal care organized by WHO as part of the Great Reset, explains. Ah, uh, it goes on. 
You wish it would end, right? The panic demic treaty is being established. May 24, 2021, the European Council announced it supported the establishment of an international panic demic treaty under which the WHO would have the power to replace the constitutions of individual nations with its own constitution under the banner of panic demic prevention, preparedness and response. The world has already seen how many How any emergency, real or concocted, now or in the future, could then justify who taking over the entirety of government operations and sovereign nations, robbing all individuals of their freedom and fully crushing the democratic republics of the world. The author warns, the spirit of communism can be felt throughout the document. We are told that the purpose of the new strategy will be guided by a spirit of solidarity anchored in the principles of fairness, inclusion, and transparency. All lies, of course. Notice, as in all pronouncement by global predators, there is no mention of individual rights, political liberty, or national sovereignty. The great engine of human progress, human freedom, will be replaced by the great destroyer of humanity, collectivism, under the rule of the elite. Tucked into the report were the real goals. Here are three main purposes or goals of the proposed treaty. One, response to any future pandemics in particular by ensuring universal and equitable access to medical solutions such as vaccines, medicines, and diagnostics. Two, a stronger international health framework with the WHO as the Coordinating Authority on Global Health Matters. Three, the One Health Approach. Yeah, we felt that One Health Approach. One Health, their approach. (laughs) Uh, Connecting the health of humans, animals, and our planet. The report adds, more specifically, such an instrument can enhance international cooperation in a number of priority areas, such as surveillance, alerts, and response, but also a general thrust in the international health system. Clearly, they were building support for Tedros' announcement that WHO would take over the entire international health care system. Even your food will be under their control. In addition to your finances and your health care, the global cabal is intended, also intend to control food supply and dictate what you can and cannot eat in the name of combating chim- climate change and saving the planet. The great, rate, the great Reset is the reset of life and society as we know it. Not a single area will be left untouched. Sustainable Development Agenda 21 the 2030 agenda, the new urban agenda, the fourth, the fourth, or as I like the way Klaus Schwab says it, the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> yeah, it will be force, forced upon us, whether you like it or not. Uh, build back better. Yeah, that's Joe Biden's build back better children. Green economy, the new green deal, Paris climate agreement, the global warming movement and in general, all refer to and are part of the Great Reset Agenda and its resource-based economics, meaning the mark of the beast. Yes. The 2030 March to the Mark of the Beast, total control and tyranny of the entire world. That's their goal. The common goal of all these movements and agendas is to capture all the resources of the world the ownership of them for a small global cabal that has the know-how to program the computer systems that will ultimately dictate the lives of everyone. When they talk about wealth distribution, what they're really referring to is a redistribution of resources from us to them, and uh, they will be called benefactors. Yeah. That's because they're not, they are only called benefactors because they rob the people and then they redistribute the wealth. Of course, keeping most of them for themselves. That's the way those that are called benefactors have always acted. 
the common goal of all these movements and agendas is to capture all the resources of the world, the ownership of them. When they talk about wealth redistribution, what they're really referring to is a redistribution of resources from us to them. The goal is for you to own nothing, that's us, to own nothing. Everything you need from the shirt on your back to the roof over your head, you'll have to rent from the globalist owners. They're working very hard at this. Even the food you put in your mouth is planned to be under their complete control. To this end, the WF has partnered with the EAT, that's the E-A-T forum, which will set the political agenda for global food production. The EAT forum was co-founded by the Wellcome Trust, which in turn was established with the financial help of GlaxoSmithKline. EAT collaborates with nearly 40 70 governments across Africa, Europe, Asia, North and South America, and Australia, and maintains close relationships with imitation meat companies, such as Impossible Foods, which was co-founded by Google, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates. Gates has also been gobbling up farmland, becoming one of the largest private landowners in America. EAT has developed a planetary health diet that is designed to be applied to the global population and entails cutting meat and dairy intake by up to 90%. And guess who's going to get the 10%? Well, of course, they are. (laughs) They just don't want you to have it. Replacing it largely with foods made in laboratories along with cereals and oil. Yes, oil for your longevity, not... Not surprisingly, Gates is on record urging Western nations to stop eating real meat altogether because he uh, he doesn't want to give up that steak himself, all that choice stuff himself. Don't think for a minute that he will. Don't think for a minute that he got the jab, the transhuman jab either. They all knew exactly what was going to happen when they started giving it to people. They They developed this jab many years ago and tested it. And they knew exactly what was going to happen. This whole psyop, they may have fooled President Trump, and I pray that they did, that he's not complicit, but it doesn't matter if he is or not. He still, like, has to be rated up there with uh, one of the worst presidents in history because he allowed them to start this thing on his watch. Yeah. Cannot be trusted. Not surprisingly, Gates is on record urging Western nations to stop eating real meat altogether, and articles have been published in the past three years insisting people need to get used to eating bugs and drinking reclaimed sewage. Yummy! All in the name of sustainability and saving the planet. Yes, you must eat sewage in the name of sustainability. Can you see how that's sustainable? Yeah. Saving the planet. Being able to see the globalist plan as clearly as we can see it now, we have an obligation to future generations to resist. I agree with the author of this article here. We have an obligation to resist. No one can be passive now. The time for passivity is over. Resistance even to death is what is required and uh, you know all you cowards out there praying for a pre-trib rapture yeah you'll be the first ones to capitulate to the mark of the beast when he comes because you're going oh the bible was wrong the antichrist here they're trying to make you get a mark of the beast the bible must be wrong oh i must get the mark of the beast is that how it's going to be yeah we'll see At least half of them will capitulate. The other half will wake up. Right. I can see that happening. We can win. Yes, we can only win by submitting to God and repenting from our sins and accepting his substitutional sacrifice, the propitiation of his substitutional sacrifice for our sins. So that when our life does, our mortal existence does come to its end, that we will be raised from the dead on that day. Or if we live until he comes, which is possible sometime in the next 40 years, I believe, uh, that if we could live that long, 
then we will be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye of the eye. But that's not a rapture. That's not one of the raptures. That's called the resurrection. The hope of ages. So we need to join forces and present a united front resisting peacefully like the Canadian truckers. I agree with that. We need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves in everything we do. That's right. Um, but self-defense, that's another topic. And we, you have to play that one by ear. If God calls you to resist or to defend you and your family, uh, depending on the circumstance, or if he calls you to lay down your life and to to voluntarily lay down your life, then that may be required of us too. But the thing is, is that uh, we must be part of the elect. There's nothing more important. Now, someone said, it is because, okay, we're, oh yeah, people become, Dale wrote this in the chat room and called in, people become dismayed when they become a Christian and go through tribulation. But tribulation is necessary for the trying of your faith. How do you know? Don't you question your faith? Have you never questioned your faith? Is my faith real? Well, you go through tribulation, and when your faith is tried, you will know that it's real. And as time goes on, you'll see the evidence of God working in your life because he changes you. But the thing is, we're still sinners, and we still sin until the day we die. But God works on us, and we get better. We become more resistant, but we never, we, we be, we are in the process of being perfected. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just allow the Holy Spirit to work repentance in you continually. I call it walking the repentance road. See that narrow way that leads to life that nobody wants to walk on? It's not fun. But the reward makes it worth it. It's, I call it the repentance road because repentance is not fun. People hate the word repentance. Even in most churches, they won't say it, you know, because they, they want, they want God to accept everyone as they are and everyone to accept everyone else, even in their sin and their sinful lifestyle, even though their sinful lifestyle grows and becomes more blatant and prideful. That's the way the world wants it. But we're on the narrow way that leads to life. It's an uncomfortable way. The repentance road. And if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to work repentance in you, see, that's absolutely a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And that is a deadly and unforgivable sin. That's not one you want to commit. You want to submit to the Holy Spirit when He urges you to repent when he works repentance in your life don't balk don't run away don't believe it unacceptable but praise god that you can repent that the holy spirit can work repentance in you and you can be in that process of being perfected until the day comes when you go to the grave and the resurrection of the dead, or he returns and you're changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at his second coming, to join him in the air with all of the elect from time immemorial. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. That's the way it will be. Nothing is more important. And that's uh, really all I have time for today. You've been listening to Cross the Border. This has been a live prophecy reality edition where we come here once a week and uh, turn on the studio cam, uh, even if it doesn't work. There's our signal. May the Almighty bless you and keep you as you travel the narrow way that leads to life. Yes, the road of repentance. If there was a sign on it, it would say Repentance Way. 
see you next time.